Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Atiya Allah, Atiya Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum. And always a reminder from myself and Abdul Ajisu, Da'ifu, Miskeenu, Zalimu, Jahal. And but for the grace of Allah that I am and we are still in existence from Allah's infinite rahmah that doesn't become angered and extinguish us from existence. It's immense rahmah and mercy. And from the knowledge of awliyaullah we have a journey. And those whom Allah is guiding towards a reality then Allah inspire these guides to teach about that reality. That every year is a hijra and a movement into these oceans of reality. The first month, the month of Muharram was a movement into the cave of safety when Sayyidina Muhammad made a hijra. And in that hijra he stopped at Ghar al-Thawr, the cave of Thawr. That cave we never left. So whatever you're doing on this dunya and how to relate these realities, it's a dress of what's happening upon the soul. And the reason they teach it not to boast or brag about a knowledge but to inspire people to rise up. To rise up. There's something far greater happening than our day-to-day -day eating, living, drinking. There's a journey that the soul is on of realities and dresses of realities and awliyaullah come into our life and teach when Sayyidina Muhammad moved. Every movement was an immense ocean of realities that struggling for 13 years in the reality of Mecca means the struggle of your heart. Before you can get to faith you have to struggle in the mulk and in the world. In your physical world faith doesn't just come because you wanted it. Faith is something you fight for. Peace is not something you say, I just want peace, I go sit by a tree and peace comes to me. That would be nice but Allah put shaitan in this earth. So as soon as you say, I want peace, shaitan says, really? Oh you're one of those and your whole life now become upside down. So it means you fight for peace. When people don't understand the word that they use thinking peace and serenity and it just comes to you, no you have to fight your demons. You have to fight the desires and all the bad characteristics to reach a state of God's satisfaction so that He dresses us with that serenity and that peace. That peace only comes from the proximity to the Divinely Presence. When you feel the angelic light and the angelic reality of your soul is near you and dressing you, of course you feel peace. You sleep in peace, you walk in peace, you eat in peace because our only peace is from paradise and your paradise reality begins to accompany you on earth. So they teach these realities to inspire us that rise, rise up, awaken and move towards the ascension of your reality. When Prophet moved from the state of Mecca and struggling 13 years against himself, against every type of condition, Allah granted an opening. And that opening he moved towards the city of lights means towards the heavenly kingdom. Everything on earth is an analogy for something happening. That you're going to be given a hijra and a movement into the heavenly kingdom. And the rahmah that Allah wanted is, stop at this cave for your nation is in need of what I'm going to be dressing you with. 
as Sayyidina Muhammad ran from them, entered into the cave. This is the cave of all realities. Qari Thawr is the original cave, Ashab al Kaf and all the prior Prophet of Allah they're imitations of the Muhammadan reality, they're placeholders. Their story is only an imitation of the, the khatim that going to arrive upon earth, every movement that Sayyidina Muhammad makes is the real movement, everything else was an imitation. So means in this understanding of our movement we call Shams al-Arafeen, these are the knowers of the reality of the sun of all knowledges. The Shams is the light of eternity, the Arafeen they are on a journey, on an eternal journey with their soul into the oceans of these realities. Muharram for them was an opening and every year is an opening to go back leave everything bad, step with their right, asking for Allah's satisfaction for new openings this year, new blessings, new dressings, they go to the cave. And in the cave Sayyidina Muhammad took his great Siddiq and we describe that in Muharram. So they entered into the cave, that surah, surah Tawbah dresses and guides Muharram. He said, the Qur'an is the guide for all humanity. This Qur'an coming from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad manzil Qur'an. Then imagine now what is the reality of the soul of Prophet Surat Al-Tawbah dressed Muharram. The cave is the secret of entering into that reality when Allah Describe for the companion that leave that oppression and go towards the city of light. And Prophet takes his beloved friend Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, they entered into the cave. The cave was sealed by the spider web, the dove. There was a hole within the cave where a snake was coming out, and the great Siddiq covered that hole with the blessed qadam and the blessed foot of a Siddiq. That cave represents the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And the nation and all of creation is being dressed by that cave, blessed by that cave, never leaving that cave. That cave on earth was symbolic of the Muhammadan heart. And Prophet taking his companions that, I want to take you to my reality. We're going to leave our physical state of Mecca and we're going to enter into this world of the soul. But you can't get to the world of Medina, Medina to Munawwara, to the world of light without coming through my heart. That's the cave. Had he gone directly then he would have set an example that everybody can reach to this city of light. So no, not this city of light. This city of light that I'm taking you Maqam al-Mahmud, the highest of Allah's stations in proximity which is Qawb Qawseni O Adana. The highest of the highest requires that you stop in my heart. Are you getting? Physical things represent spiritual realities. He didn't take him straight to Medina. Is taking so that you and everyone who comes after in this nation of mine will learn the stop in my heart to reach this city of Medina to Munawwara. So the cave is the heart of Prophet And awliyaullah understood they've been taken, they're so witness, they witness the cave and they see the reality within the cave. And that's why they were taught by it. This cave of Sayyidina Muhammad is guarded by a spider web. So you go, spider web, oh Qur'an, Surah 29, oh 29, that's Lam Alif. 
right? The Malif, the Sirat al Jalala, Anna Medina wa Babahu. The spider web is the La Malif, is the Zulfiqar. That you look into this heart of Prophet none will see it. They see it as just, oh, okay he delivered a message, he left astaghfirullah. When Allah give guidance, He's given guidance, whom He has not guided there is no guidance. The cleverness you keep reading something and you think you'll read it a good way and you'll understand something, you won't understand anything unless Allah guides you. So the cave is the heart of Prophet Ra'in Kaboot is a symbol and a sign. This is guarded by 29, 29th letter of the huruf is Lam Alif, Lam Alif Zulfiqar. Teaching you no, now there are gatekeepers on this cave, Ulul Bab. There are categories in which Allah names His Rijal. There's Ulul Bab, they are the caretakers of the door. And they sit with a 29 guarding the cave. And awliya come and teach you, oh 29 is a lam alif. A lam alif, yes they have a zulfiqar. They carry a zulfiqar with them like that, just a little one uh -huh. just to show you symbolically. <laughs> Why? Because they're custodians of lam alif. They're the custodians of what Nabi Musa wanted. Somebody emailed and said that, I don't understand. When you talked about Mawlana Shah Naqshaband helping Sayyidina Zul Qanayn, why would awliya help anbiya? So because in Allah every knowledge and knower there's a higher knower. The rajat of knowledge is infinite has nothing to do with the rank of your physicality. You can be a king and the person can be a shepherd and his knowledge f far outranks any king. Knowledge for Allah is based on the soul and that has nothing to do with physicality and that soul has no time. So what does it matter for Allah if the soul of his awliya come to teach the soul of a Prophet from Bani Israel and that's why the Hadith Prophet clarified that my ulama means my companion who are all awliya and all the awliya who will come, waris al-anbiya from Bani Israel, they are the inheritors. Means they will teach you from their knowledges of those realities because they inherit from Sayyidina Muhammad And we're entering into the month of that reality. The Sayyidina Musa, a Prophet of Bani Israel from the big Ulul Azam, the, the great Prophets of Allah he wanted a knowledge that was not accessible to him and he was sent to a Muhammadan guide which is the 11th shaykh in the Naqshbandi Shajara, Sayyidina Khidna, Sayyidina Abbas Khidr So Prophet of Allah wanted to seek knowledge this is the month of Surat Al-Kahf where Allah wants us to understand that that Lam Alif, the secret into that cave is the secret of all knowledges. The Zulfiqar and the Lam Alif is where the two rivers meet where Sayyidina Musa wants, I said I won't stop until I reach where two rivers meet, where the river of your creation and your Divinely Presence, where do they meet Ya Rabbi? There's two rivers of knowledge, the river of mulk and everything that created which is called Muhammadun Rasulullah because we taught you that everything manifesting is in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah And I want the knowledges of your Divinely lights in the ocean of La ilaha illallah. And I don't want to stop until I reach. These we know as the Muhammadan haqqaiq, I don't want anything from what you gave to me. He was asking Allah from Muhammadan haqqaiqs, was why? Because he saw it. 
When he said, Ya Rabbi let me see you, Allah showed him the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Qashya out. It was out. He witnessed what his Lord wanted him to witness of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And they said, that's it, I want this reality. I won't stop. What you're going to feed me of knowledges is nothing compared to I want from the reality of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah That's the Zulfiqar, that is the, the secret of the entrance to the cave. And inside the cave you must be connected to a great Siddiq. You must be a part of a tariqah to reach the realities of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad because he teaches that if you're in my heart that's why he's in the cave and he's resting in the cave because it's a station of fana. He's not busy in the cave. Every, every, every word that Allah uses are immense oceans within the Qur'an. So when Prophet is resting because he says, you're entering my heart, I'm in fana. This is where I'm in the Divinely Presence my heart. Who do you have to be with if you want to be with my heart? You have to be with my great Siddiqs, my companions whom they're truthful in their actions and in their deeds. Because the great Siddiq is the only one who can put his qadam on that hole where shaitan is going to come. Shaitan is trying to enter into our hearts. And at every moment tries to enter into the heart to poison the heart, poison the faith, poison everything that we believe in. And no doubt he'll enter because Allah gave to him. But what was Allah's najad for us? That if you're with these great Siddiqs they're going to put their foot on that hole. That's the inheritance that Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq gives to the Naqshbandiya shajara. I gave my whole life for this reality of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah That means I gave everything and that's what I left as an inheritance is this Zulfiqar and this kalimah. As a result of that my support will come to fight the shaitan entering into your heart. So this is a cave we never leave, this is the eternal journey, Muharram starts the shaykhs are teaching, we are now going for that cave. How do you go to be with someone you love? And how do you go into the cave of Sayyidina Muhammad It's not by your salah, not by your zakah, but by your muhabbat and your love. You do your salah because Prophet ordered you to so that he'll love you. You give your zakah so Prophet be happy with us. But it's the muhabbat and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad that will direct our soul into that cave. And then it goes now on autopilot. As it entering then the holy month of Safar is opening. What's the next nine after Surah Tawbah? Because it's in power of nine. This is the sultanate of nine, the reality of nine. That's why I say if you know three, six and nine you know the secret of this universe. Three is everything is in three, Allah one, two is actually a reflection of the one and three is where we come from, it's the reality of the soul. Six is the reality of wadood and love that Allah created everything from love, I wanted to be known and I created, I wanted to be known. So imagine how much he loves the reality of what he's going to be known from. He's going to be known from the best. He's going to be known from the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah So that's why if you come against that reality you have severely come against Allah is a, is a great punishment. That I wanted to be known, like this is the best of what I have to present. Can you imagine coming against the greatest thing that Allah wanted to be known by? And that's the immensity of that love and that immense blessing. That Ya Rabbi we found it, we found this reflection, we understood this reality that you're manifesting your love and all your goodness for 
creation to understand it will be known as Muhammadun Rasulullah So everything is created by this six and wow, everything, everything is manifesting from wow. Nine is the Sultanate, so it's a triangle, three is one base, six is another base, nine is the Sultanate. Nine being the Sultanat, so the next nine is what? Surat al-Kahf, eighteen. Eighteen is oceans of hayat is now opening. So nine we were in the cave, moving towards the cave, eighteen you entered into the cave because in Surah Tawbah verse 40 was a description of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq in the cave with Prophet that you are with your companion. They entered in through the verse that Qur'an is dressing us. Now that you're in the cave, this is the month of Safar, entering in the cave. So the first few ayat of Kareem is the beginning of Safar. Hajj Shahid is 18 verse 16. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ اعتزلتموهم وما يعبدون إلا الله فَاءُوا إِلَى الْكَحْفِ يَنْشُرْ لَكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ مِنْ رَحْمَتِهِ وَيُهْيِي لَكُمْ مِنْ أَمْرِكُمْ مِرْفَقًا صدق الله العظيم الكريم when you turn away from them and the things that they worship, their oppression and their zulmat, they worship everything other than Allah betake yourself to the cave. Means Allah warning for us, run from this dunya, seek refuge in someone who already is in my refuge. Where are you going to shelter yourself from shaitan? except other than already is protected from shaitan which is the heart and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why Prophet described, you'll be with whom you love. Betake yourself to the cave and that your Lord will shower you with His mercy. Who's the rahmah of Allah Sayyidina Muhammad As soon as you run, say, I'm running Ya Rabbi, I want to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad protect me from oppression, protect me from every difficulty. That's why when we read these knot, they had far greater plagues, Ta'un, they had every type of difficulty. And they're saying that when we praise upon Sayyidina Muhammad that my eyes are filled with light, my home becomes filled with light. What is it that I have to fear? Everything is, is fearing that light of Sayyidina Muhammad And they fill their hearts with light and love and faith while shaitan is trying to pull your faith. Perhaps I shower you with my mercy and dispose of your affairs towards comfort and towards ease. Means I take away your difficulties and I give you comfort and ease. Means you'll reach Allah's satisfaction. So Surah Kaf, the first ayahs at the beginning of the month then is now the lesson for Ashab al-Kaf. In the middle of the, the month it'll be about Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Khidr as salam. How a Prophet of Allah sought the guidance of awliyaullah for the knowledge of what these awliyaullah have where Allah described these awliyaullah that they attained a rahmah, not they went and studied fiqr, they attained a rahmah and then we taught them knowledges. 
Because when Allah teaches there's no time and infinite capacity because Allah has opened their heart to the rahmah. But the beginning is Ashab al-Kaf. So our life now when they say, oh this is a heavy month, yeah it's a heavy month because Allah is sending immense haybah, immense majestic lights of grace and majesty. So then we go to the app and say, okay open up now the month, open up safar and understand the tajalli that awliya are taking in this heart of Prophet they say, oh Safar, then you look at Safar and say, oh this is the 18, this is the entryway, Surat Al-Kaf. What's the 18th name of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulul Rahmah. Oh this is the cave of Rahmah. 18th name of Allah from Dalal Qirat because these are keys and codes, Al-Fatah. The one whom going to open, open what? The cave. What cave? The cave of Rahmah. So that to run into Allah's oceans of Rahmah. So then we read Surat Al-Kaf to be dressed by its blessings, dressed by its lights, dressed by its understanding and every ayatul kareem is dressing us in this holy month. Then you go to this cave, I'm going to be in the cave, it's a hijab. Allah dressed Prophet and is continuously dressing. Twelve hijabs of light that Allah has no time and is continuously dressing the soul of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad at the station of Ghawba Qawsaini O Adana where Prophet says, I receive the tajallis and my light is always sweating from the haybah and majesty of what Allah is dressing. So while we're doing this and studying this, as Prophet is now receiving from Allah this dress of safar, this reality of safar, the hijab of haybah. Where Allah for 11,000 of Allah's years was making the zikr, Allah was making the zikr upon the light of Sayyidina Muhammad Subhana man alimul hakim. Subhana man alimul hakim, glory be to my Lord the all-knowing and the wise. So you enter the cave of Rahmah and that's why the second part is about Sayyidina Khidr and Sayyidina Musa because he wanted knowledge and wisdom. And Allah sent him a servant that was given wisdom and then dressed with knowledges. That's how they come to these understandings, that what they've been taught from these realities and what Prophet has given to them of inspirations. So this is the month Subhana man wa alim al-hakim where Allah are going to dress from the oceans of haybah and majestic light, knowledges and wisdom because it's the time in which the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad is opening. They're entering in, entering in, they say, oh it's a heavy month, of course haybah is a heavy tajalli, it's not jamali, it's jalal. And everything crooked becomes straight. So it's heavy because the energy is immense, the, the dressing and the blessings are immense. So the first part of that is to understand that the Ashab al-Kaf they ran from badness. So sometime in our life we're going to watch this video, we're going to understand, Ya Rabbi I don't want any more, I don't want to be with these bad people, I don't want to accompany in the, the fellowship of bad people, I want to run to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And in every moment there are people running, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَاتِحِ رَعَيْتَ nas. they're coming in droves. That they understood shaitan trying to kill us all, inject us, shoot us, put a mask on us, put fire on our hands to clean us. When are you going to have enough? And you still think he's your friend, take your guidance from him too until he tells you jump off the cliff and people would jump. Until Allah inspire within their heart, run from shaitan, direct yourself to Rahman. Run to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad then you understand these mafil, these salawats and these naat. 
You're not going to get there by intellectual understanding, you're going to get there by praising, by being like a little bulbul, right? Because don't you love the morning? So every type of dif difficulty you have and you say, how these guys are so happy? You wake up sad, whatever you went through at night, why are the birds so happy? They're always singing, always praising Allah You don't think if you got your attention or you're getting the attention of Sayyidina Muhammad I know you have difficulty, I know you have sadness, I know you have hardships. But your singing is very beatific because you're coming with all your heart and like a bull bull you just keep putting your heart out, heart out, heart out. Hoping one day Allah will grant a relief. Allah hears everything, come closer to you. But when you're sad, you cry so much nicer because you're stomach's not full, you ha you're in need. When you're full and relaxed the bird just like, oh, doesn't want to sing anymore because it's so full, he can't… so what is it? You sing when sadness and difficulties in your life because you're so much sincere and, and asking Allah for relief. They don't sit there and intellectualize and make long du'as, 45 minute nonsense from their mouth, lips saying one thing, heart smelling a different way, body doing a different thing, but sing and praise Allah And in every praise are immense du'as. And when you're praising and praising and your heart one day understands and praise and praise and this beatific fragrance begins to come from your praising all immense du'as. Look at their words. When you're sitting at home, open the salawat book and start reading salawats. Don't read du'a from your mouth. The du'a from your mouth is filled with all sorts of rubbish. I want this, I want this, I want this, I want… Gimme, 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 my name is Jimmy. Right? Give it to me, come on give me that, give me that, oh I feel like I'm going to be robbed. Allah said, just sing for me, sing these beatific songs, I'll become your beatific voice. Every beatific emotion Allah is right there in the emotion. When you begin to sing and recite and drum and do everything we do, Allah's right there in the emotion. I am in that emotion and that way of your praising. So no doubt we have the attention of Sayyidina Muhammad and that is our key into this cave. We pray that Allah continue to inspire us to goodness and that Sayyidina Muhammad's nazar always be upon us and through that nazar to dress us and bring us into these oceans of reality and by that nazar save us from every type of mushkilat and difficulty wherever we're coming short Ya Rabbi with, with immense rahmah and softness. We're not in need of any type of hard learning and, and severe difficulty just with a nice cotton if you can just push us a little bit this way and that way so that it's gentle and soft and loving. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.